To be in flow at work or while studying, you have to have a high level of focus. And here's where this simple graph really kicks in. What you can see is here, you can see time and your ability to stay focused. The more you deplete your wealth of focus, the lower your focus gets, obviously, of course. But there's a way to keep your focus high and it is super simple. So let me get this pen and let me simply draw out something for you that is super simple. You're going to love it. So if you take a break here, your focus is back to 100%. Now you start from here, it declines as you use it, but then you take a break and you back here, back here, back here. Most people, they work too long without breaks. And because they don't have any breaks, their focus dips steadily until it almost hits zero. It is almost impossible to stay focused, like deeply focused on something for more than, let's say, an hour, an hour and a half. You need breaks. And the cool part about this is you deplete your focus for an hour, but all it takes is five to 10 minutes to get back to 100%. So this is my first tip for you. Leverage what I call the 52-5 method. Every 52 minutes, take a five minute break. Refresh, recharge, stand up, move, set a new intention. And then you get back to work. That is going to drive your focus so much more. And if you, really try to work for four, five, six, seven, eight hours deeply focused. It's impossible. So take a break every single hour. And there's been a study done that proves this to be most effective. And that study, which was the largest study on productivity that has ever been done, they had three different groups. One worked for long periods of time without breaks. The second one took a break every hour. And the third one, worked with the Pomodoro technique, which is 25 minutes of work, five minute break. What they found was that the people who worked for long periods of time were least productive. They thought they were, but they weren't. Then the second group that was found to be second most productive was those with the Pomodoro technique. And the technique that was most productive was the ones who worked in hourly sprints. And they found on average, people took a break between 45 and 60 minutes. On average, 52 minutes. That's why it's called the 52-5 method. So use this simple formula to increase your ability to stay focused. And I've got four more tips for you to be in flow every single day. But if you're meeting for the first time, hi, I'm Enik Matz, I'm a leadership coach, and I'd love to, for you to subscribe to my channel down below so you don't miss any of my future videos. Now let's jump right in. Key tip number two is you need to have, be challenged to be fully in flow. There are certain flow triggers and being challenged is one of them. If you do challenging work and what you do right now matters, like what I do in this video matters because I only have one take. I don't do three takes, I don't do 10 takes. What I do in this video matters. So I need to be on, I need to be on my A game. So when you are challenged and when you have a challenging time frame or some pressure on you, it's easier to get into flow. That's why they found that elite athletes, for example, like extreme sports, like skiing or skating, they have a very easy time to get into flow because it is so challenging. Like think about someone who's going like on a rope between skyscrapers or between valleys without any security. When they are on that rope, they better be on their end game because every moment could be their last. So when you are challenged, it triggers something in your brain to really focus, to really pay attention. Because in ancient times, when you were in an environment that was not safe, you better pay attention because otherwise this moment could be your last. So you can find ways 
to challenge yourself. Maybe you up the stakes. Maybe you shorten a time frame. Maybe you set a new standard for yourself for how you want to show up. There are many ways to challenge yourself, but when you are challenged, it is so much more easier to get into flow state. And that brings me to my third point, necessity. You need to have this necessity of being on your A game. Like these extreme athletes, they need to be on their A game. There is no other option. So when being on your A game is a requirement, you are so much more motivated and you are so much more focused on the task at hand. You won't allow yourself to be distracted if it is necessary for you to produce results. I mean, think about this. Why are people who have children oftentimes so much more motivated to get stuff done in a short period of time than, for example, when you were in college? It's really simple because they need to. They need to put food on the table and they need to do so in the shortest amount of time possible so they can have the maximum amount of time with their family, with their children. So this is huge. When you tap into your psychological driver of necessity, this is going to change the game for you. And one simple thing you can ask yourself is, why does it matter? Why do I need to be my A game? Why do I need to make this happen right now. Procrastination is simply you know what you should be doing, but you don't do what you should be doing. You wait. The cure to procrastination is knowing why you need to sacrifice and pay the price right now. Because when you do challenging work, you have to make a sacrifice right now. You could be watching Netflix. You could engage in gossip, but you choose to do meaningful, impactful work. That is a sacrifice that you are making. I'm shooting this video. I could be out in nature. I could be with my girlfriend. I could do all these things. But I chose to pay the price and do the work right now. If you want to be willing to pay the price, you need to know why that matters. And it's so vitally important. Key point number four is you need to set up your environment for success. Like your environment dictates how you show up. If you are in an environment that has a lot of distractions, a lot of interruptions, it's almost impossible to be in flow. A study found that it takes you 22 minutes on average to refocus after you have been interrupted. Now the interruption might be really bright, really short. It might be one minute, but still, it takes you on average 22 minutes refocus. That is 22 minutes completely gone, wiped out, in which you are not really productive. So you need to create an environment in which you are, can be fully focused. And that is so powerful. And one simple tip, if you think like, yeah, man, my boss wants something from me, my colleagues want something from me, they interrupt me all the time. Then create specific time blocks in which you are available and in others in which you're not available. Like for me, for example, the first four hours of my day, I'm not available. I'm not available to other people's requests. I do my work. And then afterwards, I'm available for my team, for my customers. But in those first four hours, this is deeply focused work. And this is so vitally important. And then the last key idea I have for you, this is really simple. You need to build in some novelty into your daily routine. When something becomes predictable, here's what's happening in your brain. Your brain pays less attention because it already knows what's going to happen. In ancient times, this was brilliant. Again, when you were in the savannah or your ancestors and you knew there is no lion, there is no saber-toothed tiger, there are no real dangers, that was time for your body to relax, to refuel, to recharge. But in today's world, there are no dangers. Like literally, yes, you could go onto the street and get killed by a car, but you don't really think about this. So there are no real dangers. And when your environment, your daily routine is the same all the time, then your brain just turns off. It doesn't pay attention. So 
what you can do is you want to mix it up in your daily routine as well as in your daily environment. For example, you could sit on one side of the table one day, on the other side of the table the next day. Simple changes can make massive differences. And those are my five key tips for you to be in flow every single day. If you like this video, smash like, and don't forget to subscribe down below. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of my future videos, and I'll see you in the next one.